New Zealand exports pine logs worth in excess of $2 billion each year. But export markets such as China and India have strict bans on any insect passengers on those logs, especially bark beetles. New Zealand's bark beetles do not attack living pine trees here. But in the northern hemisphere, some bark beetle species have devastated thousands of hectares of conifer forest. Intensive fumigation is the answer for export logs, but it's costly and carries environmental risks. So the industry set up a research program to reduce methyl bromide use and develop alternative treatments. And for that, they need beetles. Thousands of them. There was just one problem. Despite the pressing need to study these beetles worldwide, no one has ever successfully raised them in captivity. Graham Clare, an entomologist at Plant and Food Research, took on the task. It was a massive challenge. Very little was known about the life cycle. A lot of people had tried and failed, but we had to give it a go. The biggest hurdle, which had defeated all attempts so far, was to find and extract enough eggs from tiny burrows hidden in tree bark to meet the huge breeding targets. Bark biscuits, tied together with rubber bands, were easier to handle, but getting at the eggs was as difficult as ever. We, we tried dozens and dozens of techniques. We had to come up with a solution. It was urgent. If we had not, it would have failed. The breakthrough came when Graham tried pre-slicing the bark, actually the soft, moist phloem under the bark. It's now a simple matter to disassemble the bark sandwiches and extract eggs under a microscope. We finally cracked it. After all these trials and tribulations, we got it. It's something to give us thousands of eggs. An accidental discovery solved another mystery. Golden-haired bark beetles would lay eggs after two weeks of feeding. But the eggs of the other target species, the black pine bark beetle, failed to appear. It was only when a bark sandwich, left over from an earlier trial, started producing black beetles that the team got the clue they needed. It turns out this species needed to feed for six weeks before laying eggs, four weeks longer than their golden-haired cousins. Sexing beetles is also tricky. Even under a microscope, golden-haired males and females are identical but only the males stridulate. They make a clicking sound with their legs when agitated. A simple stethoscope is used to listen for males. The team had to design and trial every aspect of insect management. Diet, storage, airflow, temperature, microbe and fungus control and transport for each species before they could finally produce enough insects of consistent quality for the demanding production schedule. The world's only bark beetle raising facility has now produced around 200,000 insects and collects more than 20,000 eggs each month. This was a long slog. We faced many challenges, solved each one and moved on to the next. And that's when I knew the impossible was possible. <laughs>